Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I captured this photograph. Now, this is an example of a highly reflective subject with lots of complex curved surfaces. The techniques I used have brought out the shape and detail of the subject without many distracting reflections. OK, so let me show you what I've got set up already. Here I have a C stand, uh, which I'm using to suspend on this piece of steel cable here, uh, this French horn. Now I've picked a French horn on purpose because it's highly reflective and has lots of complex shapes and detail. Uh, so it'll be a bit of a challenge to, uh, to get this to look good. Now I've placed this quite a long way from the back wall of the studio here on purpose. Uh, and I'll come back to that a bit later. On the floor, I have a piece of black cloth, and now I've put that there to stop some reflections from the floor, uh, but again, um, I'll come back to exactly what we're going to be doing with that a little later. Then we have the camera. Uh, this is on uh, this tripod, and I have a 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens on the front of the camera, and I have this flash sync trigger on the top of the camera. This is also capable of controlling the uh, energy in the studio flashes. And the camera is tethered into Capture One software. So I'll just turn on the camera. There we go, and the software has uh, recognized the camera and come up with the settings uh, which I have uh, at the moment on the camera, which is 1 30th of a second at 2.8. So with those settings, I'm just going to take a test image just to see what happens with the ambient light that we've got in the room. There we are, and you can see from this image that you're actually getting quite a, uh, a good starting point. Looks like it's slightly out of focus in places, uh, but you get the idea. There's lots and lots of specular reflection from all the, uh, the lights that are actually on in the room. So we need to eliminate uh, all of the uh, ambient light which is in the room and the way to do that is to just adjust the settings that I've got on the camera. At the moment I have a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second. Now I can increase that up to the sync speed for that camera which is 1 250th of a second. Also, uh, I don't think I'll be using an aperture of 2.8. Uh, what I can do is increase this uh, to, shall we say, f8 to start with. Uh, and with those new settings, I'll grab another image. We'll just see what difference that's made. OK, so that's made it quite a lot darker, but we're still getting some specular highlights from the roof lights. So I'll increase this aperture to f16. We'll take another test. There we are. That's almost got rid of them. That's down to a, uh, a level that we can probably live with. OK, so that little exercise has revealed the first of uh, probably many little problems that we're going to have. With the aperture set to f16, we're going to need quite a lot of energy in the flash in order to illuminate the subject properly. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a Profoto D2, which is a, a 1000 joule uh, studio flash head. Here we are. So this is the uh, flash head, and I'm pointing this vaguely at the subject, and it's relatively close. We'll see how we go with that. This is just set to an arbitrary uh, energy level, and we'll just take a test image to establish the exposure. OK, so you can see from that that we need to increase the exposure somewhat. OK, so I think initially I'll take the energy up by about two stops. Like that. We'll try that again. OK, so that's uh, the beginnings of a, an image. You can see there's lots of specular highlights in here. Uh, and the whole thing looks OK, but not brilliant. So the first thing that most people would do in a situation like this would be to apply a softbox to the front of this uh, head. That will soften um, the highlights, uh, but it will also have another effect as well. So let's start by adding a three-foot octobox to the front of this flash. There we go, like that. So with that in position, 
I'll probably need to add uh, a little more energy because the softbox will uh, take some out. So I'm initially just going to add another stop. We'll take another test. OK, so we can see that in this image, um, the highlights are very blown out. Um, but the softness of the softbox is helping a little bit. If I go back to the previous image, um, we're losing quite a lot of detail uh, in here uh, due to it not being illuminated that well. With specular subjects like this, uh, it's a balancing act between uh, having a specular highlight and having a, uh, a soft gradient showing the shape of the subject. So in this example, which is the one that we took with the softbox, uh, you can see that um, some of the highlights are completely blown out. But we have picked up some shape uh, on the subject itself. So perhaps we might try this in a different position. That might help. So what I'm going to do initially is just move this back a bit. So if I just bring it back to over here somewhere, like so, and possibly take that up in the air a bit, just to give us the same or similar angle, that will have the effect of turning this into um, a smaller softbox from the point of view of the subject, which will make the highlights a bit more defined. Uh, but it should also, due to the inverse square law, um, stop the highlights being burnt out. Having said that, I have moved it a fair distance away, so I'm going to need to add probably a couple of stops of energy just to compensate for that change in distance. So I'll do that first, like that. And now we'll take another image. There we are, that's a vast improvement over the previous image. I just go back one, this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. So the lighting is a bit more even, uh, but one of the things about taking pictures of highly reflective subjects is that they will reflect an image of the light source, which you can see here. And that can be a bit of a problem. So what might be a better way, instead of using a softbox, uh, I could use a diffusion sheet. Uh, and by placing that uh, in conjunction with a studio head, uh, we should be able to produce a, a graduation across the surface of the subject. Here we are, so I've replaced the softbox uh, with this uh, scrim, which is a quarter stop silk uh, on a frame. Uh, suspended from this uh, C-stand, and at the back here I have a studio head. So we'll just give that a, a test for exposure and just see what the difference that makes. OK, and already you can see that the quality of the light uh, is uh, very much better than what we had with the softbox. If I go back to the previous image, this is what we had with the softbox, and this is what we've got with the diffuser. But you can still see that there is a fairly well-defined image of the diffuser in the subject. So at this stage, it all becomes about scale. This is a four-foot diffuser, and I can't actually get it any closer to the subject without it getting in the image. So the only alternative I have is to make it bigger. So there we go. I've swapped that out uh, for this um, 8 foot by 8 foot scrim, uh, which again has a uh, quarter stop silk uh, scrim on it. Uh, and this is made of a type of nylon, uh, but you can use virtually anything uh, which is uh, semi-transparent to do this sort of thing with. Uh, at the back here, I have uh, just increased the height of the uh, flash. don't know whether you can see that through the scrim. So with those bits in place, 
what I can do is we'll just take a test image just to see what the difference is. And there we are, you can see already we're getting an order of magnitude um, better uh, graduation in the subject here. Uh, and you can see that this now goes all the way along the front of the, the horn. Uh, if I compare that to the previous version, this is what we had with the smaller scrim. Uh, and it just sort of stopped and fizzled out, really. Uh, whereas with the larger one, we end up with a much, much better, more defined uh, graduation. But there are still quite a lot of reflections and bits and pieces that we don't really want. So the way to address all that is literally just to mask it off. So what I'm going to do is add some more black cloth. Uh, and I'm going to put that around the periphery here uh, just to stop all the unwanted reflections. There we are. So with all that in place, let's just take another image and see what it looks like now. And I think you can see that immediately that has cleaned up this area in particular um, very well. So if we just have a look at the differences, this is before we put all the, uh, the various bits of black cloth on. This area quite round here uh, is actually quite good. Um, so I'm actually going to use that as part of the final image. So I'll just put a mark on that, uh, that part. And then on this image, which is the one with all the black cloth in place, you can see that uh, we've got rid of all of the distractions, but I've left this line following the curve of the instrument uh, just to show where the edge is, really. Uh, and I think that's worked quite well. But we're not quite done yet. One of the things about uh, having a, uh, a subject which is like this and has lots of ref reflections uh, and specular highlights is that you want to be able to bring those out. Uh, so one of the ways that you can do that is just to add another light at the back here just to um, fill in uh, the inside of the detail here and it will also add a few specular highlights. So what I'm going to do is just use another Profoto D2. I'm just going to pop this at the back here. I've put a reflector on this just to control the, uh, the beam uh, a bit just to see how it goes. So I'll just turn that on uh, at an arbitrary energy level and we'll give that a bit of a test. So in order to test what it's going to do, I'm just going to turn off uh, this uh, main light like that and we'll just fire the other one. Okay, so you can see from that it needs a considerable amount more energy uh, I would suspect about three stops. So I'm just going to add three stops to that light. There, that's the sort of thing I wanted. You can see all the highlights that that light is causing in the detail in the inside of the subject here. So with that done, I'll just turn on the other light again. And we'll fire them both together. There we are. That's worked very well, I think. So we've got these um, specular highlights. Uh, we've also got lots of detail in the horn itself. Uh, and also we've got nice graduations going on uh, and no distracting uh, parts that I can see. So that's looking pretty good. 
OK. So it just remains to uh, combine the uh, couple of images uh, in Photoshop and also remove the uh, steel cable holding it up. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do now. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. And these are the two images that I've imported. The first one being the one without the uh, black masking. So you can see all the stands and things in the edge of here. But this side of the uh, French horn is highlighted quite nicely against the black background. And then we had the final image that we took where everything was cleaned up. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, all the stands and stuff have now disappeared. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just make a stack of these two images. So I'm just going to go to File, come down to Scripts, and then just go down to Load Files into Stack. I'll ask it to add the open files and just click on OK. There we go. So Photoshop has made this stack uh, with each image on a different layer. So I can turn one off and turn the other one on, like that. There we go. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a layer mask to this layer, like that, just by clicking on the icon. Uh, and this has added this layer mask. So wherever I paint in uh, black will reveal the image which is underneath it. So just making sure that black is selected as the foreground colour. I'll just pick a paintbrush here. And the bit that I actually want to reveal is just along this edge here. So I'm just going to make this brush a bit bigger, possibly a bit softer like that. There we go. I'm just going to just paint down this edge just to bring back that edge all the way around there. That's the bit that I'm bothered about, really. There we go. I think that's worked very well. Just add a bit to those as well. There we go. Excellent. So with that done, um, the next thing that I want to do is just address uh, this bit up here where the, uh, the cord is holding the, the whole thing up. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just add another layer and I'm just going to paint out uh, this steel wire uh, by using black uh, and a paintbrush. So I'll just zoom in a bit so I can see what I'm doing. Like that. I'll make the paintbrush a bit smaller, possibly a little harder. Yeah, a little harder still, I think. That's better. And now I can go right up to the very edge and just get rid of the cord. And the bit on the bottom as well. Now the bit that's actually on the subject here, what I'm going to do is um, just clone that out, I think. That might be the easiest way. So if I just pick a clone tool. Now holding down the Alt key on the keyboard will give you your target. Then when you let the Alt key go, it will give you the paintbrush. So I actually want to clone from this layer here, like so. And I want to clone onto this layer up at the top here. So with this layer selected, I'll hold down the Alt key, pick the area I want to clone, like that, and then click on the other layer and just paint that in, like that. So that's that bit done. And I just want to do the same with this. So again, I'll just click on the 
underlying layer. Um, pick a bit which looks like it's going to be useful to me. Probably somewhere around here. Just click on that. Go up to the other layer. Line it up. And just paint it in. Like that. a tiny bit just there as well, so I'll just do that. Grab that. And just there. Super. So with those bits done, I can zoom back out again. And we can just get rid of the rest of the steel cord, just with a paintbrush, make it a bit bigger, and just paint that out like that. There we go. So with that done, I'll just pick a crop. I've got 16 by 9 selected because that's what I usually use for these things. It fits the videos very well. Uh, but you can pick a crop that will um, suit your subject. OK, so with that crop selected, I'll just click on OK. And there we have it. So that's my take on um, photographing highly reflective, um, shiny subjects. There's a lot of technique involved in taking a picture such as this. But once you understand what's involved, you can apply those techniques to any subject, any shiny subject that you want to take a picture of. OK, so I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that uh, picture. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.